Welcome to Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project, NevadaBike.org and BikeWashoe.org. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder and talk to people about their bikes and their lives. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. This is Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM, and we're talking to Beth McMillan, the executive director of Art Town. And there's something special going on this year uh, related to cups. Uh, you know, and this is important for uh, the bike community because we are tend to be environmentalists. And so uh, reusable cups appear to be like uh, an effort to be more environmentally friendly. Is that is that the case? A hundred percent. And we've actually been doing this program for several years. Oh. Um, I think we started in 2019 before oh. the pandemic. Wow. And we found that a lot of our trash was filled with little bottles, plastic bottles, water bottles. And we cut down a quarter of our trash by changing to this program. Wow. So the way this program works is if you bring your own water vessel, it doesn't have to be our cup, it can be any cup you want. We provide free water the, at all of the Art Town produced events. So opening night, all of our global stuff in in July, in on Wednesdays, um, at Robert C. Hawkins Amphitheater, at our Midtown venue. We provide water. We work very closely with Blue Dot Water. They're a great company. And um, we have water stations. And we've got these really cool um, dispensers of water that go in the top. You don't have to turn the water thing upside down. It charges on you like a cell phone. Huh. And then you just press the top of it, and it's got like a little faucet. And then you just press the top of it and, it, and it pours water into your cup. And so we have free water the whole month of July. And if you don't have a cup, you can buy one of ours. And it's good water. Oh, it's very good water. It's like alkaline. I mean, he told me once it's like alkaline water. I'm like, what is, what is that? And he goes, it's very good water. I went, okay, all right. I mean, he's a water guy. I got to believe the water guy, right? Yeah. So, um, and what's great about this cup, I believe that if you take this up to men wielding fire, they will fill it with um, beer, but I'm not 100% sure on that. We do it as a water initiative because we noticed that the trash was primarily with um, water. Well, the Art Town produced events. There's 650 events in here. So uh -huh. only the ones that we produce uh -huh. um, is where you can buy the cups. How do we know which ones you produce? Because, uh -huh. it's a good thing you asked that, <laughs> because if you go to our little book, if you uh -huh. don't have a little book, you one. need, okay, yes. perfect. But they're hard to find sometimes. I think there were three left at the hub, uh, and I got one, and so now there's only two, or there may oh, only be so one. Oh, so County Libraries, no. Nevada State Bank, Rayleigh's, Porter Subs. Okay. Those are the places we, I mean, other people come and pick them up and we give them to people, but those are the places that we keep them, we want to make sure that if people go there, they have them. Uh -huh. so, can they just come and knock on your door yeah, here yeah, and buy a cup here. too? Yeah, yeah oh, they can okay. come and buy a so cup. So 528, uh, 528 um, West, First West First Street, First Street uh, is where you can come to get one of these cool silicon cups and for 15 bucks. in your little bucks. book, in you'll see book. here, oh. there's a little water emblem here. Uh -huh. That tells you. Let's go, where, where's the water? That you'll have cups there. Cups and water. Mm. That is, the, those are our events. Like if you go to somebody else's event, I don't know that they're giving away water. Mm. We're, or cups. Or selling cups. Either. Right. Yeah. We're doing it as an initiative to cut down. Waste. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, really why is that important, cutting down waste for an well, art event? Waste is one thing, but plastic is another. Mm -hmm. Because plastic doesn't doesn't go anywhere it stays plastic for a hundred million years so why would we want to do that to the planet we need to make sure that we are leaving the planet for the people we leave behind i i want to you know i put solar on my house last year i think it's really important to to do things that have us leave the planet in a good place and if we can just cut down the art town garbage by one quarter by this initiative are we making it perfect? No. But are we helping a little bit, like a teeny little bit? But we, everybody, if everybody did a teeny little bit, I mean, at home, I have a teeny garbage 
thing from waste management because I compost everything. Yeah. And then feed it back into the environment, you know? So I think it's super important for us to really, it's not difficult to do your part, but I think it's really important that we all just go to bed knowing that maybe we did something that could help. You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM Bike Life Radio. We're talking to Beth McMillan, the executive director of Art Town, about uh, the reusable cups that they have, which is uh, environmentally friendly, uh, similar to riding your bicycle. And uh, one of the things that I did want to talk to you about is uh, the relationship between Art Town and bicycles and if they're important in some way or another to Art Town. I don't know. Bicycles are very important. We always had a bike valet, the Kiwanis, uh-huh. who are big bike people. Yeah. They always did a bike valet, but they stopped doing it in the last, since COVID, they haven't done it. We can do it. The Trucking Meadows Bicycle Alliance can do it. You want to do it? Yeah. We didn't promote it this year, though. Usually uh, we promote it uh-huh. in our in our map. We uh, have maybe a next bi- year. Oh, let's do it. Okay. Because we put a little map here, and they will put little things saying bike valet. Ah. Uh. And you know, um, we we could potentially do it this year, but we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. Can you talk about the importance of uh, bicycle? Oh, oh, you do have a bicycle on that map. Where? Oh, I we probably it. just have bike racks. Yeah, it might be bike racks, but we could be there, right? There's a little bicycle. Oh, that's uh-huh. where the bike valet was. Mm-hmm. I'd have to speak to Clyde, our festival manager, make make sure that that space is available this okay. year. But I'll get back to you on that one. Okay, sounds yeah. good. All right. Because, um, you know, when if people ride their bikes down to Art Town, when they ride them home, it's, 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 it's nice and cool. You know, it's really a great project to get behind. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we, I mean, honestly, at Art Town, we've always encouraged people to come down on bicycles. And when we didn't have the bike valet... We had too many bicycles, so we had to. So we had to like. <laughs> what does that mean? Too many bicycles? What do you well, mean? Well, there weren't enough bike racks for the bicycles, ah, okay. so people were bringing them into the park. And when the park's packed and you lay your bike down, you're taking up some real estate, right? Yeah. So we had to figure out a plan to problem solve that, so we could all put all the bikes in one place. And um, there was another organization that did bike valet for us one year. Reno Bike Project. Yes. Yeah. They did it for a couple of years, and then the Kiwanis took over from them. Uh-huh. But they used to come down and do it all the time. And uh-huh. we have people that come, and they bring their kids in little seats in the back. And we have families that come down um, on their bicycles. And the more we can you know, instill that, and now I think Reno's even getting a little bit better at bike-friendly lanes. Uh-huh. So... Um, and some people who want to bring a electric bike could even do that. Yeah. Right? Yes. Definitely. Because if you if you live where I live, getting a Hunter Lake Drive can be a little rough. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you have a Do you have an electric bike? I don't. Oh, but you I don't? would love to have one. Uh-huh. So I should, I really need to invest in one. Yeah. And you know when I went to Porto, uh-huh. which is a little city in yeah. in Lisbon. Uh huh. I've been there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My favorite uh-huh. city in 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 Portugal. Uh huh. And the first thing I did was go rent a an electric bike oh, and nice. that's how I made my way around Porto uh-huh. one of the things that we do on bike life radio is we talk about bike stories and uh, so that's a good one you're ahead of the game here because I haven't had to introduce that idea um, but uh, yeah so while we're on that tact here uh, and that that path um, what uh, tell us a bike story from <laughs> yeah and that's it's just an amazing and it's got this the Dura River that comes right out into the the mouth of the ocean and um, Porto is a very hilly, it's kind of like San Francisco, I guess, lots of hills. And it's great to walk up, and I love hiking, so it's perfect. But I thought, you know what, I went and rented an electric bike, and that was my form of transportation around Porto. I was there for two weeks, so I probably did that for about a week, and then I, uh, I went and stayed at the ocean, and that's a whole other story. But it really was a wonderful way to get up and down and really see a lot of the city. And I even did um, an e-bike tour of the city, which is actually how I first got involved with renting the bike. So many of these cities have e-bike tours. Like, you know, you have walking tours of cities. Now in Europe, they have e-bike tours. And I think that's really a great way to see much of the city. And obviously, people are getting on these e-bikes that have never got on an e-bike before. So... The people doing the instructing have, it's like a, they've got to be a little bit of a Swiss army knife. They've got to know about the city and the tour, and they've got to know how to teach people to ride an e-bike. Uh-huh. But it was it was magnificent. And um, 
I see a lot of e-bikes here in Reno. Um, and Pat Cashel, you know, he's a big e-bike guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's Is he's he? a big bike guy, yeah. but he he's on my board of directors, ah. and he talks about he could talk so a big story about e-bikes as well what i need to do because i bring my dog to work every day so if i got an e-bike and i came to work every day i need to figure out some sort of ability to put my dog on the bike what i I do with mine is i put it in the saddlebag and it's perfectly happy in the saddlebag it feels safe is the weight on one side uh well your dog is much smaller than mine i think (laughs) it's the one that was here right right, yeah she's she's nine pounds so she's not exactly heavy no uh yeah so it's okay yeah and with an e-bike it's even less um uh unbalanced so sturdy because an e-bike for people who don't know an e-bike is very heavy Mm -hmm. it's it's not a light bicycle at all so uh, back to Porto really yes. quickly. Uh, when you rode around there, uh-huh. uh, I, I guess that inspired you to get a bike here in Reno. But uh, what was the experience like? You said it was wonderful. Did it Was it different in some way than driving uh, around in a car? Yeah, I think you have access to the streets in a different way. Um, and for me, when I saw a hill, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I better go a different way. You just hit turbo and off you go. I mean, you still got to pedal, so you're still getting a bit of a workout. But I went places on the e-bike I would never have gone on a bicycle. And I think I went places on an e-bike that I would never have gone in a car. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I really think it's a great option for touring around different cities. Nice. You're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. We're talking to Beth McMillan, who is the executive director of uh, Art Town, which is starting on Monday, uh, July 1st. Um, and we are talking a little bit about the importance of uh, bicycles to the event. Um, would people be, uh, is it, does it help with parking? Let me ask you that. Uh, having uh, a bicycle? Bike. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I think in any major city, my son has ridden a bike around New York. He's ridden his bike San Francisco. He lives in Sweden. He exclusively, that's his form of transportation, right? And... With a bicycle, parking is is a whole lot easier. You can tie your bike up just about anywhere, right? And at Art Town, um, at Wingfield Park, there is no formal parking lot, right? Uh-huh. So um, it's street parking or the county parking lot. And if you have your bike, you can be a whole lot closer and uh, get on your bike and go. Yeah. So one of the things that we've talked to the city about is is uh, bike valet and uh, encouraging events to have bike valet. And Food Truck Friday is now paying uh, the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance $150 per event to offer bike valet. And at the last Food Truck Friday, we had over 50 bikes at the event, which which I guess is potentially 50 parking spots that Correct. that they don't need anymore. And in Sacramento, they do 20,000 bikes often throughout the year at thousands of events. So the potential for growth is amazing as well as it supporting the local advocacy group. So that's what the advocacy group does in Sacramento. And we're working towards doing that here. So Food Truck Friday is paying for us. Uh, the um, Dancing in the Streets is paying oh, for yeah, uh, Trucking Meadows See, Bicycle I didn't even Alliance know you to guys do it. Existed. Yeah, and now so, you do. <laughs> now I do. We have a whole nother resource. So that's yeah. fantastic. And I tell you what, the Kiwanis are, are a great organization. Yeah. They take lots of kids and fix bikes and fix them up for kids who don't have bikes. Uh-huh. Well, and that's so, kind of fixing kids. Kids without fixing. bikes are broken. But do you yeah. remember when, you, when I was a kid? I grew up in South Africa. Uh-huh. We would like. We never wore a helmet. We no. were like two or three people on one bicycle, no shoes. Wow. I mean, you could, one oh. person's on the seat, yeah. one person's riding, one person mm-hmm. could be on the bike rack or the handlebars, you know, and off we went. And so if you didn't have a bike and only two of the people in your party had a bike, there was a way for people to get around, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. We were very creative. Now yes. it's, it's very for, more formalized now. <laughs> and I think yes. it's good. I think helmets and one person per bike is probably a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> we it, survived it takes, it. It takes some experience it to does. be able to do that. Yeah, you survived it. You didn't die. You're okay. Uh, were right. the roads dirt or were they uh, paved? Combination. Uh-huh. Combination. My road was, where I lived was, for about three houses was paved and then it was all dirt. Oh. So, yeah. But, but we didn't. <laughs> there was no... And you know what? We all knew how to fix a tire. Uh-huh. Because... You had to. There 
wasn't just a bike shop around the corner, right? Yeah. yeah. And what are you going to do? Walk home with those heavy bikes? Because they were not like the bikes are now. We all knew how to fix a tire. We, you know, I mean, that's just the way it was. Yeah. And, um, you know, my son used to ride to Reno High all the time. Uh-huh. And he, his major form is, of transportation, I said, is, is bikes. And he's probably got three or four. He's got a, he in Sweden, he has a bicycle that has like snow tires. Wow. Neat. Right? Yeah. And also for the rain, because there's uh-huh. so much rain in Sweden. Yeah. So he's got different tires for different environments for his bicycle, like we have for our cars. Yeah. A lot I'm of sure times, you do too, but I I I, I do, but I, I don't worry about it too much um, because it doesn't snow that often, and when it's here, it doesn't stay for very long. So I can drive when there's snow, which is only a couple of times a year. But um, you know, one of the things again that one of the arguments against putting in bike infrastructure has been, oh, it's too cold in the winter, or it's too snowy, and that's just not true. He got himself completely outfitted at Patagonia with the right gloves. And I think in Sweden, he even got some extra gloves. It's all about the gloves and the the outerwear, Correct. right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, Definitely. and the shoes. You can get waterproof shoes. Uh-huh. Since we're talking about schools a little bit, and your son rode to school, did he ride to Swope or any of the other middle schools as well? Um, no, he didn't ride to Swope. He rode to Reno High. In the path. The path that I'm taking us down here by talking about that is my daughter rides to Swope. And one of the things that happened during bike month is that the bike cage itself where the bikes are supposed to be parked is not big enough for all the bikes that the, and this is a new school, uh, it's been redone. And the cage wasn't big enough to fit all the bikes. So the kids were going in and just leaving a giant pile right at the entrance because there wasn't enough room to park them all. Um, And so that's a problem that needs to be fixed. One of the things that I've noticed when I go to events, and you're very observant about your events, when when I go to events, sometimes I see bikes, like you were mentioning, laying on the ground, but also locked up everywhere. And people who are trying to figure out where to put their bikes end up doing that, locking them in inconvenient places, right? So yeah, so if we're going to encourage cycling, we need to make um, the resources available to store your bike wherever you are. You know, um, I mean, if you go down to Midtown now, uh, are there enough bike racks everywhere? You know, I don't know the answer to that, but you know, uh, you go to UC Davis, Have you, you've been to UC mm-hmm. Davis, right? I mean, yeah. talk about a bike village. Yeah. There are bicycles everywhere and there are bicycle racks everywhere. Yeah. So they really encourage that culture. So, you know, we can't just say, okay, make bike lanes, you've got to, you got to go from leaving your house to the whole thing. You got to you got to provide the racks, you with the lanes, with everything. So, yeah, I think it's super important. I think it's really I do think that in the United States, Reno has an incredible cycling culture. You see cyclists everywhere. People have cycling clubs. I mean, from what I understand, right? There are tons of different opportunities for cyclists to get together and hang out and be with other people who like cycling and talk about bikes and et cetera, et cetera. You know, and I think I think that um, Baba and Mark um, Trujillo really have been... From a big, Hub. Yeah, yeah, from the Hub, have really been a big part of that. In fact, when the Tour de Ney, Tour de Ney, uh-huh. Tour de Ney when that was here, it was um, like right on the, either the beginning of Art Town. Yeah, it was right before Art Town and I... I actually um, started the race. Uh-huh. I got oh, to start did. the race. Yeah. No wow. Oh, I, mean, oh, I didn't you, ride the oh, race. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I got to go go like a whatever the flag thing or whatever that is. I got to uh-huh. get the cyclists going. Yeah. You know. Yes. Um, and I just I'm so sorry that that event is not happening. Although I think there's another cycle event that's going on in in July uh-huh. around the twentieth, right? Yeah. I, maybe I'm I'm not really sure. There's there's a bike event every day of the week here in Reno now. Um, from Taco Tuesday to Wednesday, Bike Night Reno. Um, but uh, that's an important point to talk about a little bit, is the the events in decline, uh, the reason why Bike Valet was kind of in decline, because we, we partner with uh, Kiwanis and Reno Bike Project to do Bike Valet. And the reason why they stopped or don't do it is because there was no financial support. Um, trying to be sustainable and 
Art Town as a sustainable event. Um, do you have any recommendations for how bicycle events can become more sustainable? I, I think I think it's all about the passion, which Mark has yeah. and Baba certainly had, has still. But um, you know, here at Art Town, we have to raise all the money if events are free admission. The whole thing's got to be underwritten, which includes all the tech, all the backline, all the hospitality, the artist fees, hotels. I mean, you name it, it all has to be underwritten. And if we didn't have the passion here to make that happen, I mean, we are forever writing grants, conjuring our sponsorship, um, you know, our membership program. It's, it, takes, it takes a lot to sustain this organization financially. Um, the audience doesn't know that. They don't need to know that. They just need to know that they come down and have a great time. But it really is all the work that go. The last thing I want to do is complain to the public how hard it is to raise money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they don't need to know that. I'm providing a service to gather our community, to bring people together for the enjoyment of the arts and the enjoyment of our own backyard, of our own parks and our own venues that we have in our community. Um, and they don't need to know the inner workings. You know, everybody says, what's your favorite part of our town? My favorite thing at our town, I've already seen most of the artists that come, is to watch the audience take in the arts. Because that's what we do this for. We do it for people to come together and come downtown and come all over town. Even regionally, we have events in Virginia City and Incline and Carson to really bring our community together and, you know, there's a lot of people living still in relative isolation. Come to our town. We're on a bus route. You can ride your bicycle. Um, cost is free. So even if you come and hang out with other people, if you don't know anyone, you're still around people. You're not just sitting in your isolated little home. You are Watching it on TV or something. Yeah, you're yeah. in community. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it's got a lot of positive um, health attributes as well. So I, I just think for all those reasons, we're very, very passionate here to make sure that our town does sustain itself and we are able to move from year to year. Next year, it'll be 30 years. I mean, think about that. I don't know how old your daughter is, but if she's in middle school, she doesn't know Reno without our town. I mean, isn't that crazy? Yeah. The, our kids don't know Reno without our town. And that's a big deal. We're talking to Beth McMillan, the executive director of Art Town. Uh, you're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. Okay. So with, um, the, the you're, you're doing reusable cups and you sell right. them. And uh, you're doing it for environmental reasons. And um, do you feel like this is something that is important for Food Truck Friday or others to, to kind of explore? Or how, how do you feel about it? I, well, I can tell you that people love these cups. And as a branding thing, people say, oh, we take these. They take photographs of them in Paris or they take photographs of them in the Bahamas. Or, you know, we've had photos of these come in from all over the world. They take these. Their kids take them on the airplane. It really is because you can, you can plug it up. It's a great marketing yeah, uh, element, I guess, for Reno element. in some way. Right. Um, and if there was a way for everybody to sort of work with the health department to see how to get around um, less plastic, and I don't know what that is, I don't know how they would do it, but I do think we should um, get it on the table to t discuss at least. Okay. How to make it happen. Thank you. That's uh, Beth McMillan, Executive Director of Art Town, talking about uh, the silicon cups that they've had for quite some time, since 2019. Uh, you can get them for 15 bucks at the Art Town office at 528 West 1st Street or at any of the Art Town events that, uh, are, that have a blue watermark on them. And you can get free uh, gourmet water there, too. All right, you're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. Thank you for being on. Thank you. See you at Art Town. Yes. <laughs> This is KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street and NevadaBike.org. BikeWashoe.org, too. That's it. For Bike Life Radio, we ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder, and we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. Now at a new time at 5.30 every Sunday. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank mm-hmm. you.